So, Dr. Dennis, you posted on a LinkedIn and you mentioned that take your communication and connection to the next level with these four tips. Can you tell us what are those four tips and why networking is important for job seekers? Yeah, I, th I think one of the areas, so I talk about these four tips and I'll, and I'll, I'll breeze through them pretty quickly. Yeah. And the, the first is spot other people's stories, right? And learn to do it, right? Become a little bit of uh, an alien and just land in different spots and, and listen to other people's stories. Yeah. And, you know, it's important to understand whether or not you, you can do this um, well, naturally, uh, or if uh, you have to focus a little bit more because then you'll have a little bit more empathy for other people who are trying to listen to you or to whom you're trying to speak yeah. and tell your story. So look, I mean, pretty much observational learning happens uh, easily for us as human beings, but knowing your degree of focus is going to help you become better at fabricating your own story. So, and, and that's what you need to start doing. The second bit that I talk about is, you know, how learning from others is a really, you know, a great opportunity. You know, we live in a world where we have digital digressions, which means, you know, it puts us in left field when we want to be in right field. But there's also a lot of really great content online, you know, from TED Talks to, you know, you name it, right? Whatever group that you belong to, university talks, and, uh, you know, and so a lot of HR talks and development talks. We have a lot of great brands that are emerging. You know, I mentioned Spartan, Peloton, yes. you know, we look at, you know, there are a lot of great stories on the Sports Mind Institute, on, mm -hmm. which I was fortunate enough to be a co-founder of years ago. And, and when you look at these talks and you listen to these talks, you can learn what compels um, people to listen. So, you know, learn from others, learn how they've organized key moments of, of their life, their hero collaborative and their uh, virtuous journeys. And uh, in moments, Stacey Abrams, great story, as well as, uh, of course, Stephen Jobs. The third I, I mentioned in that article is, is, you know, really pick your material. As you start to listen to stories, you're going to find that you hear stories that maybe that you'll recognize. And you're going to start to hear the essence of hero stories, collaborative stories. You, they might not be perfectly aligned the way you want them to be now that you maybe have the book and you're following the method. But you're going you're gonna to be able to understand why the stories that have popularity have popularity. And so as you begin to notice these things, you're going to start to really get familiar with the tools that are going to make your story better. And the last bit that I mentioned is number four, is harvest the good stuff. When you get good at spotting stories, you're going to hear a lot of types of the story paths. Most of the time, um, you're going to hear sort of in the middle stories. But when you start to search for the great stories, you're going to understand what creates that excitement level what energizes the story. And you'll also know what, what doesn't actually create that moment of spark too. Mm -hmm. And you'll see when, and hear and understand that some storytellers and speakers don't connect it, no matter how privileged they are in title or however likable they are, how much charism they have, they're not able to get to that next level. So sometimes it's frustrating um, when you, you know, in life, when you see this uh, and you actually know how to make it better, for me, it's very frustrating, but harvest the good stuff in your own life. Um, you, you don't get to tell anybody else's story other than your own. And if you don't tell your story, people will make it up for you. So harvest the good stuff in your life and keep refining it was the last point that I made. Yeah. You know, once you have your core, what I call peak story, and you've done the work, you're gonna fashion that story like music. I love music, so I mm -hmm. use this metaphor a lot. And you're gonna play that tune a little differently in this environment than that environment. Oh, yeah. So you can adjust your story you based on your audience, right? That, that, that's right. But, but you're not adjusting it to make it not the key story. You're just maybe, if I'm speaking to a military person, I might speak about my experience at LaSalle Military Academy a little bit more so, and, as opposed to maybe BMX stuff that I did mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a young uh, athlete. It's, okay. a it's a different way to tune your story. Mm -hmm. And the four letters I'd like you to think about are T U N E. Yeah. When you tune your story, you're creating a syntony, right? And it's an engineering term, right? And you have a syntonic relationship, right? It's like two wow. vibrations that are, uh, you know, it's simpatico, right? And once you do that, you know, you create that <laughs> resonance, you yeah. know, and that, that's what you're trying to do as a storyteller. Yeah. Those are great tips. Thank you very much, Dr. Dennis. So, and yeah. for the audience watching or listening, tune in next time for my final question with Dr. Dennis.